Hi, I'm Kavya doing my farm day in Coimbatore. This video is all about my experience in treating a COVID positive patient as a farm DN. My experience throughout this COVID treatment, I had more up and downs that I gave more knowledge in treating a patient and I gained more knowledge from treating a patient. Categorizing my experience into four different parts. First is initial assessment, next is before the treatment, next is during the treatment and the final one is after the treatment. First we will look into the initial assessment. The first and the foremost role that I kept in my mind was if a patient receives a COVID-19 treatment, he should also be screened for the underlying medical condition and proper medical treatment should be received for the patient. So in that way, my role was collecting a past medical history and medication history. Some patients might have the medication in their hand or may not have. If the patient doesn't have the medication in his hand, along with the healthcare team, the proper medication is chosen for that patient. Next comes the during the treatment. During treatment, many activities were performed. After collecting the past medical and medication history, the next step is the interpretation of lab investigation and correlation of HRCT values. HRCT value, values include CORATS and CT CBRT score. CORAT score ranges from 0 to 6 and CT CBRT score varies from lab. Certain lab has upper limit up to 25 and certain has up to 40. These scores can tell you about the correlation of virus and the involvement of lung. Next is interpretation of lab investigation. The lab investigation includes complete blood count, renal parameters, hepatic parameters, glucose level and mainly the biomarkers. The markers include IL-6, D-dimer, ferritin, LDH and C-reactive protein. If a patient has increased viral load and involvement of lung along with the increased biomarker level, an antiviral drug and steroids are started. Any viral infection can cause a dehydration, so hydration to a patient is very important. If the D-dimer is below the normal level but the patient age is above 45 or 50, patient should be started with any and any one of the antiplatelet drug. If the patient has D-dimer above the normal level, then the patient should be started with any of the anticoagulant. Certain patients can have uncontrolled diabetes because of a steroid. In that case, an insulin sliding scale should be used in administration of insulin and proper administration technique should be followed. Based upon the biomarkers and the diagnostic tool, antiviral, anticoagulant or antiplatelet steroid drug should be started. Next, based upon the symptoms, like if a patient has a cough, a cough suppression should be added and uh, if a patient has a mucus in his throat or lungs he should be started with a mucolytic agent the contents of the syrup should be chosen wisely if a syrup has dextromethorphan it is a cough suppressant and if a syrup has guanifacin and terbutalin it is a bronchodilation and mucolytic so if a patient tells of a cough with the mucus, we have to give mucolytic with the bronchodilator. The patient says he is unable to sleep due to the cough at night. So at night a cough suppressant should be added. At the time a bronchodilator along with the mucolytic agent should be given. Next is a fever. If a patient is having an increased body temperature, he should be given with the paracetamol. If a patient is having throat infection, he should be started with any of the oral antibiotic or IV antibiotic agents. Next comes the supplementation. There are many articles that imposes the importance of supplementation for a COVID positive patient. Supplementation includes zinc, vitamin C or ascorbic acid and vitamin D3. These are the most important supplement that should be given. Then patients can arise with body shivering, fever and rash after the administration of an antiviral drug. If that is the case, we have to rule out whether these are the symptoms caused due to the drug. In that case, we have to withdraw the drug and re 
to the patient the next day if it is ruled out then the patient should be administered with an antihistamine drug and then the antiviral drug next part is monitoring the electrolyte level patient has changes of electrolyte level during the day of admission we have to correct the electrolyte level and should be monitored the alternative days